British Airways and Air France are two of the best airlines in Europe, but which is actually better? In a battle between the UK and France, I'll be taking two flights while showing you everything that you need to know, but these airlines ended up being two of the worst I have ever flown. Up first today, I'm gonna be flying on British Airways, and everyone always tells me they're either really good or really bad, so we're about to find out. But now that we're at the airport, I think it's time to head inside to check in and grab our boarding pass. And then I need to tell you guys about a potential issue. Now that I was inside the airport, I found the British Airways check-in area, but I needed to go where there wasn't any staff, so I found a nearby kiosk. After selecting my airline, scanning my passport, and confirming I wasn't gonna blow up the plane, I was all checked in and ready to go. All right, so I was able to check in without any issues, and the boarding pass just got sent to my phone, which is super awesome, but now I should probably tell you about that problem. Today I'm traveling with a carry-on garment bag and also a backpack. And now some airlines will allow you to bring a garment bag on the plane, and then other ones will count it as a personal item or a carry-on. And I'm Unfortunately, I didn't pay for two of them. So I have no idea how this is gonna go. And this is gonna be the same issue for the Air France flight later too. But now that I do have the boarding pass, it's time to head through security because on the other side, apparently there's a pretty cool lounge to check out. And then it's finally gonna be time for our first flight. And lucky for me, it was super easy to find where I needed to go. But this ended up being one of the wildest security experiences of my life. Going through the initial bit of security, they searched my bag. So we're gonna have to add a point to the tally for that. But since I'm flying to the UK, they then had to check my passport. Apparently when I came into the country, they didn't give me a stamp, so they were asking me a ton of questions. I had to show them my boarding passes and basically prove that I wasn't just illegally here. But thankfully, they let me through. So now it's time to go and check out that lounge I was telling you guys about earlier. And lucky for me, I didn't have to go very far in the airport before finding the Diamond Lounge. Making my way inside, there was a ton of space for sitting with views overlooking the planes down below. But there was also a full service bar. So what was on the menu? Well, for alcohol, there was rosé, white wine, red wine, beer, and also soda. But since it was breakfast, I I decided to stick with the juices. Checking out the food, there were omelets, pancakes, chicken, waffles, donuts, muffins, tons of different cereals, and also a bar with cheese, yogurt, and a bunch more. So obviously, I had to load up. So overall, I'd have to say the lounge was actually pretty solid. It was super modern, there was tons of seating area, the staff were also incredibly friendly, and on top of that, there were also a ton of food options, which were all pretty delicious. I'm gonna have to give it a solid 9 out of 10. But anyways, there's now only about 5 minutes left until the first flight is supposed to board, so I I thought I'd take this time to tell you guys a little bit more about British Airways, just in case you have never flown them before or have no idea what they are. According to TripAdvisor, they are a three and a half star airline. When it comes to the reviews, they're pretty balanced. On one hand, you have people saying that they are horrible dealing with cancellations or delays, that their customer service sucks, and someone even said to book Ryanair instead. But on the other side of things, people highly recommend them because they're known to go above and beyond, but still people acknowledge that they could only be decent at times. So considering they're rated the UK's best airline, Line, there's definitely some good reviews and also some terrible ones too. So I think it's time to head to the gate to find out for ourselves. And remember, after this flight, I still need to fly on Air France to see which of the two airlines is actually better. And unfortunately for British Airways, things were only gonna go downhill from here because after getting to the gate, it turned out the flight was super delayed. All right, so bad news. The staff just came on the overhead and said the inbound flight is delayed, meaning our departure is gonna be an hour after what it was supposed to be. If I'm being honest, they actually don't know when our departure is going to be. They just said it's going to be an hour. So who knows when it's actually going to end up happening. <laughs> so far, we're off to a terrible start. But to make matters even worse, that's when I noticed Google saying that the inbound flight had actually been canceled. So I'm going to go and talk to the gate staff and see if they have any other information because that is slightly concerning. Excuse me. Do you know what the inbound flight code is? Because I was checking online. It says that the inbound flight is canceled. But it can't be canceled because it's flying. It's on its way. Oh, okay. So it turns out the flight is actually in the air, but it's delayed because of air traffic control restrictions in London. I'm a little bit stressed right now because even if I land in London, I have another flight tonight to Amsterdam. That's on KLM, so if this flight gets delayed, I have no idea what happens there. So I am very stressed out right now. And at this point, there was really nothing else that I could do besides sit and wait. But finally, after 45 minutes past the original departure time, our plane showed up, so it was time to board. Hi there, how's it going? Good passport first. Thank you so much. Have a nice flight. Thank you. So far, we've been delayed up to 45 minutes, but it's time for flight number one. It's time to see what British Airways is actually like. Hi there, how's it going? 
Making my way to the cabin, I passed by the business class before going all the way to the back of the plane where I was seated for today's flight. Checking out the butt cushion, backrest, and headrest, things were definitely on the stiffer side, which might be a problem, but to make up for that, I was happy to see that there was a solid amount of recline. All right, so initial thoughts. Right off the bat, the seat is definitely on the stiffer side. When I was doing the comfort test, there is pretty much no padding, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's uncomfortable. It's just definitely very stiff. Now, considering the previous flight just got in and they had barely any time to clean, it's actually pretty good looking around. For being only five foot eight, the legroom also isn't too bad whatsoever. And another thing that I thought was actually pretty good was the recline. Normally on economy class seats, you barely get anything, but on this one, it was actually pretty respectable. Right. But anyways, I did just get on the flight and there is still so much more that I still need to explore. So I'm gonna do that right now. Looking around the seat, I noticed that this one didn't come with any in-flight entertainment, but that is pretty normal for these shorter flights. Looking under the seat, there was a ton of room for storing my bag. The overhead also had plenty as well. And while I was up there, I decided to check out the reading lamp and AC, which were thankfully both working. Looking around some more, I noticed there was a coat hanger built into the seat, and I was also happy to find that there were two windows as opposed to just the normal one. But that's why I noticed we still haven't pushed back from the gate yet. London has uh, sort of improved at the moment. Uh, it's uh, no longer as foggy as it was this morning. However, there is still a bit of a backlog. So we have picked up an air traffic control slot uh, for our return uh, with an earliest airborne time at the moment of uh, 1.42. Uh, local time here in Brussels. So we're looking to push back hopefully uh, within the next uh, 25 minutes or so. So it turns out we're going to be delayed for at a minimum another 25 minutes. I will give them credit where credit is due. Apparently the delay was due to weather so technically it's not their fault and the ground staff and flight attendants are doing their best to get us underway as fast as possible. Now you may have noticed that the pilot said that this is the earliest time which means we could actually end up being here much longer. So hopefully we end up pushing back soon. But again, I have no clue when that's actually gonna happen. So fingers crossed. But lucky for us, it turns out they actually gave us the go ahead early, which meant we were finally able to push back from the gate almost two hours after the original departure time. For the first flight of the day, I was gonna be flying roughly an hour from Brussels to London. And after getting to the runway, it was time for takeoff. Now, since this was a short flight, that means that the meal service would soon be starting. But before then, I decided to check out the seat pouch. Inside, I found the safety pamphlet, which we won't be needing since Airbus doesn't crash like Boeing, a waste bag in case you get sick, and also a menu for the food, which is available to purchase. For this, there was a bunch of things to choose from, like lunch snacks or savory ones, a bunch of sweets, soft drinks, and of course, alcohol, because we all know that the Brits are borderline alcoholics. But anyways, it was at this point that the crew began coming around. So I took out the tray table, which was a super respectable size before getting a free bag of chips, chocolate bar, and water. This is definitely the shortest flight I've ever been on in my entire life. Literally from Brussels to London, I think it's 40 minutes in the air, which is insanely short. But now that I'm halfway through the flight, I thought I'd go ahead and share my thoughts. Right off the bat, the delays on the ground absolutely sucked. Now earlier, you probably remember me saying that the seat is definitely on the stiffer side. And I'll be honest, that is definitely still the case. This has only been a 40 minute flight and my back is kind of sore. But now one of the big positives is that the meal service was actually really good and there's still about 20 minutes left in this flight and a few other things that i still need to check out and then as soon as we land it's going to be time for flight number two but before then it's time to check out the bathroom overall things were pretty average it was a decent size pretty clean and had everything that you would come to expect including a bunch of headroom so after finishing up i had made my way back to my seat where we begun our descent and soon enough came in for landing but then things took a horrible turn after taxiing to our parking spot it turns out british airways just forgot to send the buses to let us off the plane so we weren't allowed. And then to make matters even worse, another British Airways plane then blocked the buses that were supposed to come to our plane for nearly an hour. And finally, by the time we were allowed off, it had been an hour and a half total. So the British Airways flight itself wasn't terrible, but their ground service with that bus situation was one of the most disgraceful things I have ever experienced. There is no reason why it should take an hour and a half to get a bus to a plane and not even have it organized when you get there. So to be completely honest, the bar is very low for Air France to beat. But speaking of Air France, I have only flown them one time before and it wasn't the greatest experience. But now that I'm at the airport, I think it's time to head inside to check in and grab our boarding pass to finally see which of the two is actually better. 
Similar to earlier, I needed to find an area that didn't have any staff, since my carry-on was still super overweight, and soon enough I was able to find the kiosks. After tapping on the screen and agreeing I wasn't an international arms dealer, I put in my booking reference before being able to print off my boarding pass. Alright, so that check-in experience was super easy. It's a little bit strange that they have absolutely nobody in person and it's all kiosks, but on the bright side, the kiosks work great. I was a little bit concerned because I'm actually at the airport four hours before my flight. Don't ask why. And normally you wouldn't be able to check in that early, but we had no problems whatsoever. But now that I do have the boarding pass, I think it's time to head through security and then finally see what the Air France flight is going to be like. But this is where things took a turn for the worse, because at security there was an Air France employee making everybody weigh their carry-ons. And well, I think you could probably guess what happened to me. So they just got mad at me for having overweight luggage, even though I just got here on an Air France flight and there were no issues. So far we're off to a very shitty start. And because of this, now I needed to hike around this airport until I could find the right people to talk to. Hi there, where would I go for this? That means you have to drop off your baggage, so you must do it on the computer, there's no checking here. I know, but I need, to, I need to talk to someone about it. Number seven, then ask the manager. Number seven, cool. So I just landed on an Air France flight with this backpack and everything, it was okay. And then I was going to recheck in over there, and then they said it was overweight. Thank you so much. All right, so it wasn't actually the end of the world. They just checked in my bag for me for free, which was super nice. They completely understood the situation. They just said, yeah, sorry about it. We'll just check it in for you. So now it's one last carry-on to worry about, but I do have to pick it up once I get to Prague. Realistically, not the end of the world, but it could have been a lot worse because they could have charged me and all of that. So it's time to head back to security and hopefully this time I actually get through. <laughs> but then the military took me aside. I'm just kidding. This time I got through security without any issues. Well, thankfully airport security went super smooth. None of my bags got searched which is honestly surprising considering it usually always happens so I'm definitely gonna have to add a point to the tally there now normally when I'm past security I would go and try and find a lounge but I actually don't have access to any at this airport so I'm just gonna head to the gate and then it's finally gonna be time to board the flight but unfortunately for me once I got there it turns out that it was delayed for about 25 minutes until the first group started to go all right so my flight is actually currently boarding so I have to make this quick but I thought I'd take this time to tell you guys a little bit more about Air France just in case you've never flown them before or have no idea what they are. So just like British Airways, Air France is a three and a half star airline and the reviews are just as balanced. On one side of the spectrum, people complain about their customer service, the fact that they are awful at handling delays and numerous other people just say not to fly them. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, people love the pilots and staff. They call it a superb airline and that everything is good besides the food. So the reviews are actually pretty comparable to British Airways. The complaints and good things are almost identical, but it's gonna be interesting to see what they're actually like. So let's head to the gate and make sure we don't miss this flight. Bonsoir. Hi there. Perfect. Thank you. Enjoy your flight. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh. It's time for flight number two. Let's see how Air France compares to British Airways. Hi there. Bonsoir. Making my way past the business class, I noticed that this flight was in a 3x3 just like on British Airways, and eventually I made it back to my seat for today's flight. Doing the comfort test, I was pretty disappointed to see that the butt cushion, backrest, and headrest were super stiff, which is never a good thing. But at least the headrest was fully adjustable, and the seat's recline was mediocre at best. Right off the bat, this seat is very comparable to the last time I flew in Air France, and unfortunately, so far it seems like it suffers from the same issue. Basically, it's this really weird thing where it has to recline all the way for it to be even remotely comfortable. The butt cushion isn't bad, it's just that the seat position is really weird. And as well, I'm only 5 foot 8 and the leg room is definitely super tight. And one of the things I have a problem with is that the boarding was delayed because they were cleaning the aircraft. And if I'm being completely honest, my seat is uh, pretty disgusting. And I think the main reason I have such a problem with it too is because how much Air France can cost sometimes, the fact that they're charging a premium and this is the quality of it. And remember, I just got on the flight and there's still so much more to see. And on top of that, there's still the flight itself. <laughs> Now just like on British Airways, since this was going to be a shorter flight, there was no in-flight entertainment, but there was Wi-Fi, so I'll need to check that out once we're in the air. Checking out the overhead, I was happy to find that the reading lamp and AC were working, there was plenty of room to store bags, and even underneath the seat, it was pretty spacious. Now as for the accessories, just like on British Airways, there was a hanger for coats, but this time there was a cup holder, despite the fact that things were absolutely disgusting grinding. But anyways, it was now 9.14, almost a quarter past the original departure time, and finally we started pushing back from the gate. For this second second flight, I was going to be flying roughly an hour and a half from Paris to Prague, and after getting to the runway, it was time for takeoff. Just 
just like earlier, since this was a shorter flight, the meal service would soon be starting, but before then, I decided to check out the Wi-Fi. If you wanted to text, it would be completely free, which is always nice, but if you want to use other apps, that would be 5 euros, and if you wanted to watch YouTube or movies, then that would be 15, which is pretty steep if you ask me. Now after checking that out, I wanted to investigate the seat pouch, which had a safety pamphlet, but nothing else, which is a bit strange. But anyways, it was at this point the crew started coming around for the meal service, so I took out my trade table before getting a sandwich, water, and a coke. So now that I'm about three quarters of the way through the flight, I thought I'd go ahead and share my thoughts on it. Now, very similar to what I said on the ground, the seat is not the best. Now my back isn't sore, but I do have to have it fully reclined for it to be remotely comfortable. And then the other two things that are also pretty bad about the seat is the leg room is super tight, and it's also extremely dirty, which is just gross. But now as for the positives, the in-flight service was actually really good. And another thing that I want to say too is that all of the staff are incredibly friendly. They're all super cheery, they're having conversations with a bunch of the passengers, which is always really nice to see. So I think it's time to tell you guys which of the two airlines I think are actually better. Well, when it came to the ground service, Air France is the winner there. When it came to the seat, that has to go to British Airways, but when it comes to the amenities like food and Wi-Fi, I'm gonna have to give that to Air France, meaning this time around, they are the better airline. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and watch this one next.